That sounded nice. <laughs> it did. Listeners uh, might notice that it's a different ting for two reasons. Two. One is that the microphone may not be as good quality. Yeah, we're, we're having to use the built-in mic. Um, and two, because we've got different glasses. Because we are in a hotel room. In Portugal. Live from Portugal. <laughs> well, this isn't live by the time they're listening to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, that ruins the magic. It is live, it is live. It's live, it's right now. Yeah. Well, we thought we'd do, like, a catch-up episode, didn't we? Yes. Because we haven't spoken to you in a while. Yes. Also because people keep DMing me being like, where are the rest of the episodes? <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> we've been busy, we've, we've done a lot, so in yeah. the last, like, I was going to say month, but it's less than a month that... We've had the report out. Oh, yeah. We've had a wedding. Yep. Congratulations. We, yes. On being my wife. Thank you, wife. <laughs> um, yeah, we've had a lot. We've had a lot go on, haven't we? Yeah, no, we have, yeah. So I think we will probably discuss those things this episode. Yeah. I just um, think we should try yeah, and, and like, of, recap. Yeah, and a bit of a general catch-up, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's introduce ourselves because we keep on getting more and more new listeners. I know, we're at like over 33,000 downloads, which is just immense. I just don't even know what yeah. to say to that. And also, on your one of your recent TikTok videos, you were recognised from... My voice, yeah, yeah. From The Wandering Room. Yeah, somebody commented on one of my TikToks being like, is this the Jess from Wandering Room podcast? I recognise her voice. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? That's <laughs> uh, awesome. That's amazing. So, like, they're listening to the Womb podcast, but they don't know who we are. Yeah, And then they've, like, great. come across me on TikTok and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> These women the are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. This is the same mixed up accent as before. <laughs> but, yeah, now I know. And that happened a couple times, didn't it? Yeah. And, oh, I, yeah. I, and we were both really surprised. Yeah. Yeah. God knows. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Monopolising all the platforms now. <laughs> <You're not as. laughs> well uh okay well why don't we start back at the report we have so much to tell you about that report okay so we could do hang on a minute can i just we, hang on I we didn't could, even introduce ourselves oh, when we just shit, said yeah, we were gonna sorry, do that you know, sorry we have been out drinking and we went out for dinner we've, not, been out, we've not really been out drinking we had i have a lot more than you you, you had one you had, co- you had two cocktails and i had one cocktail i've had three Okay. I had the big one before we left, yes. which I had doubles in it. I didn't. I don't know if I told you that, but I did. That's why it tasted so strong. <laughs> I couldn't drink that cocktail because it tasted so strong. No, I didn't put doubles in yours. Oh, my God. I don't know if the guy just was like, oh, well, she's having doubles. She can have doubles. But he didn't charge me for doubles in yours. Right, well, mine was definitely doubles. Oh, okay. Mine was, but I asked for it to be doubles. Why are you looking at me like that for an holiday? It was an innuendo. <laughs> sorry everyone they couldn't see that face you just pulled <laughs> um yeah no we're like right. okay let's go back so um you want to introduce yourself yeah I, I suppose now you put me on the spot like that well um so my name is jamie shrive mrs oh my god jamie shrive yeah um if you I've... believe in that sort of thing hey <laughs> lowered my uh Car insurance quotes, thank you. So, yeah, <laughs> I believe in that sort of thing. I do now. <laughs> Am I right, Aviva? No, no, yeah. <laughs> um, Aviva getting with the patriarchy. <laughs> um, I don't really know what else to say about myself. Okay, well, my name's Jess, and I am the other half of the Wandering Wound podcast. <laughs> um, and if you are listening to this for the first time, where have you been? And also, you can go back and listen to all of our other episodes, which are a mishmash of some of the weirdest and most wonderful stories that you probably ever listened to on a podcast. Absolutely. Mixed in with us often just going completely off track because we've had a drink. Yep. And a lot of, like, academic conversation. That shouldn't occur way. after Jam Shed. No. Absolutely. <gasps> Sorry, can I just interrupt? Have you all seen the new jam Ooh. shed? Oh my Ooh. god! There's actually two new types of jam shed. There is. So or there's three. there is Argentinian jam shed that they've brought out, which is made with blueberries. Fuck me, is that shit nice? It tastes like pork. Oh, it's so it's fucking really good. good. And then they've brought out jam shed 
rosé. Yeah, which we haven't managed to try yet. No, and jam shad chardonnay. Which my mum has tried and yep. she said that it's amazing. So and we're going to have a bottle with her when we get back, aren't we? So we're still waiting for Jamshed to send us royalties because, frankly, we know that we're behind the success of Jamshed. And Absolutely. now they've, now they've like branched out into other kinds of wine and we've still not had any free Jamshed. So, I don't know. I might start tweeting them once a day. Yeah, everybody should... Right, everybody. <laughs> use your social media ca- media accounts and use them for good. Lobby Jamshed and get them to send us free samples. We, we should be the, the voices of Jamshed. We should. I don't know if they would agree with that, but anywho. Okay. <laughs> Two bad so, femme yeah. lesbians, the voices of Jamshed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think, I mean, there's 33,000 people listening to this fucking podcast. I think they're all just going out and buying all our Jamshed up. I'm sick of going to the fucking Morrisons and being like, there's no Jamshed. Brilliant. <laughs> it's all gone. Well, anyway. Um, okay, so let's start at the start. So our report came out, didn't it? Yeah, it did. We released the biggest ever sample and report you know well it was a bit it's like brief data it's not the full report the full report needs to come out this summer along with a ton of other stuff that we need to release yeah around it which is gonna is a big job so you're gonna have to bear with us i think it'll take us a year to release all of it i do um you know it was an absolutely huge sample yeah so so for those of you who don't know um we created a huge survey to find out this the true scale or as best we could of violence that women are subjected to since birth um and it was we did it uk um and you found you'd read that report years ago didn't you was it sweden norway norway and it was one of those um sort of areas um I, that might have that that might have come across a bit like not okay to say it like that is that okay to say it like, that? like not what well, i don't want to say that as sort of nordic countries aren't is it they? i don't want my drug mike you have bad geography my geography and i have bad geography. and i own that shit i don't yeah. know where anything is if i honestly i fucking maps for all like for all i know someone could mix that shit up and i would i wouldn't know <laughs> anyway um and what they did it was for um, looking at child abuse rates, wasn't it? Yeah. And in they, primary schools. Yeah, and they instead of saying, "Have you been, sub, like, have you been sexually abused?" To, yeah, child yeah. abuse. Have you been neglected? Blah blah blah. They would give specific examples. So like, like have, yeah, have you been kicked? Have you been punched? Have you been slapped yeah. in the face? Um, and they found that that data was much more accurate than asking them in more broader academic or like weighted terms and that's what we did that's what we decided to do for this report which is the first time it's ever really been used yeah and amazingly since it was released even though it did cop a lot of flack we've had several universities and the british psychological society um you know commend us for the method and also start adopting the method Mm. so we've had um, some universities have contacted us to say that they are now uh, utilizing our method in their own research with um, women and girls who've been abused and now children um, to explore violence and abuse in a more accessible way, yeah. which is amazing to hear because, you know, in reality, rather than asking women, you know, have you been raped? Have you been subjected to domestic violence? If we're going to ask them nice, clear, easy, accessible questions, you're going to get better data. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So the findings came out. They were everywhere. They were on like, you know, every news channel. They were in all the newspapers. I've seen so many write-ups of it. We were in Grazia magazine. We were in yeah. Stylist this month. Yep. Um, which somebody sent me on an aeroplane. <laughs> they were reading it on an aeroplane. And they were like, oh, here's your study. And sent me some, like, pictures of uh, stylists writing it up. And, you know, it's gone really it's gone really wide and people are having these huge discussions about, It's been you know, in all of the tabloids. It was on BBC, yeah. wasn't it? Sky, it was on, yeah, it was on ITV. Sky. It, yeah. was, it was just huge. It's been in, like, all of the, and, you know, all of, like, the, it's been in The Guardian, hasn't it? Independent, was it The Independent? The Independent, yeah. Everything. But the... The interesting thing about it was the findings. So the findings Absolutely. were, you know, that um, over over ninety nine percent of women have been uh, in our sample 
had been subjected to a form of, of violence since birth. Yeah. And, and 97% also, of them had been subjected to sexual violence since birth. No, it's um, Isn't it? 99. Oh, yeah, it came out at 99. 99.7 for violence overall and 99.3 for sexual it, violence yeah. overall. Um, and we included in the forms of sexual violence, we did it purely based on the Sexual Offences Act. Um, and so we included everything that was in there. We asked it, We asked everybody individual questions. So we said, like, um, have you ever been catcalled in the street? And, 90, and 94% of women said that it had happened to them before they were even 18 years old. Yeah. And Which is the, disgusting. And what this means, really, is that... You know how you hear these statistics that say, like, oh, one in three, one in five, one in ten, one in twenty women, whatever. They've never sat right with me. They don't sound right. Like, every woman I know has a story. Yeah. So, like, if every woman I know, off the top of their head, and every everywhere I go, and every time I talk about it, off the literally off the top of their head, they've got a story... That's not fucking one in five or one in ten or whatever, is it? You know, that means it's one in one. Like, it's all of us have got a story. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, you could go right now and go talk to your your friends or your sisters or your mom or, like, a woman that you know at work or whatever, and you could, for example, start up a conversation about catcalling. And, she, oh, she'd have an example. Yeah. She'd have an example. Then you could start up a conversation about, I don't know, being groped in a club. She'd have a fucking example. Yeah. Like, it, this stuff isn't rare. Yeah, but also, when you remove the weighted language, like rape, yeah. and like, yes, it is a rape, but when you remove the weighted language and use it in, like, n- like more descriptive terms, people who might be less likely to want to say that they've been raped or want to admit to themselves or, you know, even people who think that maybe it doesn't exist. Or still or still to this day don't think it's a real rape. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where they can acknowledge something happened, but they don't want yeah. to say it's a rape. It means that we were able to collect the, the, the most accurate data we could yeah. on something like that. Because I think is, is, the, is the current data, what is it, one in five on rape? Um, it depends where you're getting it from. So, so for example, the um, the international data, like World Health Organization and stuff like that, argues, uh, and like UN Women argues, that one in three women will mm. experience a rape or an attempted rape in the lifespan. Yeah. But then the UK data puts it at one in twenty. Yeah, no. Based on crime statistics, so yeah. like, it's all over the fucking place. So, like. But our data found that over 50% of women had woken up in their lifetime at least once Mm -hmm. to their male partner having sex with them or performing a sex act on them, which means that's at least one in two. And that, do you remember, that went all over the press. Yeah. Because there were so many statistics from that report, but that one really shocked people. And on talk radio, there was that young girl who, who phoned in and said that she had never considered that it was rape and that um, she had had to try and, like... Well, she she said that she thought there was something wrong with her. And there were so many women. It was talked on, talked about on Loose Women, where Denise yeah, Walsh said... Yeah, Loose Women were talking about Yeah, well, Denise Walsh was saying, like, that it was really common and yeah, that, yeah. you know, all of them... I think all yeah. of them were affected by it because... Of how common it is. Yeah, definitely. It was a huge... It was a... It was and, a hu- and actually, I think, like, when you point out to people that that is rape, you can't consent whilst you're asleep, it was a big wake-up. Yeah, it was. You know, for want of a better LB, phrase. LBC ended up dedicating an entire day to that. Yes, stat. they did. All yes. day. They just had phone-ins all day from women yeah. who had woke up to their, their partners performing sex acts on them or having sex with them. It yeah. was, like, it was... I heard from their producers and their presenters all day that day and they were just shocked. Yeah. Like, they... I actually talked to them the day before and they were like, oh, we don't know if anyone will ring in, but we think they might. And they were inundated. They couldn't keep up with it. Mm. It was, you know... Yeah. So, 
the report itself, um, I don't want to spend like the whole time yeah. just talking because there's so much to talk about. But like the report itself was a massive achievement. Absolutely. I don't. I'm not going to get into the criticisms of it because some of it was just petty shit, <laughs> um, and has been. And we've. Had, you remember? You remember that man who said that we were like two second years and then the British Psychological Society made a whole video and dedicated like so many of their posts to us and how incredible our methodology was. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. Yeah, some people were just mardy about it. I don't know why. You would hope, wouldn't you, that pushing research forward in one way or another, whether you agree with the method or not necessarily, it is still you know, of vital importance, but obviously not. I think some of it's got to the point where it's like if, if that if that particular person hasn't done it, then they're not interested in it because they, they don't get to say it was them or whatever. Yeah. But it's it's just, some of it was just mardy shit. But anyway, um, overall, it's had a massive impact oh and God, it's going to yeah. be debated in Parliament and, you know, we've got all that coming this mm. month. So that's going to be interesting and a bit scary, but we'll see how that goes. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, we were contacted by the MOJ as well to give talks to them about it and stuff. So, mm-hmm. but uh, so like that was going on, wasn't it? And that was while we were getting ready to get married. Yes. Oh my God, we were getting married like, what was it, a week or two afterwards? Three weeks. Was we it? Three oh weeks my after God. Then. Honestly, it was so much to deal with and also get everything ready for the wedding, wasn't yeah. it? Um. And I mean, in general, though, I think we did okay. Like, everyone kept going, like, are you okay? Are you stressed? And we were both like, no, we're pretty calm about it. Like, we're all right. It got, I think it peaked in terms of stress, like, two or three days beforehand. Yeah. But, like, we, we, (laughs) I think we've been pretty chilled about it because the wedding was very much about me and you. Yeah, it was, yeah. Wasn't it? And it was small. Yeah. Um, And it was, like, enjoyable and it was supposed to be about us Mm. you know um we had (laughs) god we had some fucking stress a stressful and like eventful few days before we got married the wedding itself was amazing though like yeah it was lovely i want i just think though that you need to tell the fucking story right of you collecting your wedding dress Which which bit when we were both trying them on? Yeah, because oh, because uh, we'd seen each other's wedding dresses, we knew what we were doing, and like we're not precious about anything like that. And like we walked down the aisle together, like we didn't have anyone giving us away, like we did everything together. We we've not hidden anything from each other. We went out and bought matching wedding rings, didn't yeah, we? And they're yeah. beautiful. And like, um, so anyway, we did the whole thing together. We went to the dress fitters together. We bought wedding dresses together. We tried them on together. We picked them up together. Like it, it was all something that we chose to do together. So, and it, we'd been, hadn't we, to go and pick the wedding dresses up after they'd finished with the tailoring. Yeah, and so we were trying them on, weren't we? So in we the were trying them wardrobe. on. We were trying them on together, just because we were really excited. And you'd done my dress up, and we had these little sashes round our waist, like a little diamante things. Thank you, Amazon Prime. Um, <laughs> and they looked dead cute. And you tied mine up, and I went to just feel it, and I thought, oh, that's a bit sharp, I just won't touch it, I don't want to snag my dress or anything. Anyway, um, we took a photo together, I did a selfie in our in our mirror together, um, and then I went to, I can't remember what I went to, I think I went to adjust it, and then I felt this spiky, horrible thing touch like and stabbed me it felt like and it hurt so bad and then you screamed did i scream yeah you screamed oh i don't remember screaming but i must have done because it really hurt and then i just saw this like black thing on my hand and i flicked it off my hand and it was a wasp and a wasp was in her wedding was dress. in my wedding dress well like on it and it stung my finger And I had to get from our wardrobe room to our bathroom to run it under a cold tap. And it hurt so bad. It stung me in two different places on my finger. And it hurt so, 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 so bad for ages. And I had to run really cold water on it until it went cold. Yeah. Until it went numb. 
Do you know what fucking made me laugh as well about all this, right, is that probably a few hours later, we were looking back at the photos <laughs> that we had. <laughs> you're laughing, you know, we were looking back at the photos, right, of, um, you know, the wedding dresses and what they looked like in the full-length mirror and, and stuff like that. And then Jamie was like, what the fuck is that? And she was like zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. And on the side of the dress was that offending little bastard just waiting to fucking sting her. So in the photo, the actual wasp is on her dress in the picture and we just never noticed. Such a naughty little wasp. It was. So, um, okay. And if that wasn't bad enough then, this is the day before we got married, wasn't it? Yes, it was. No, two no, the days. two days before we got married. Two days before. Right, and if that wasn't bad enough, right, <laughs> we'd had enough. We took the dresses off, we hung them back up, and we thought, right, let's go downstairs and we'll check on the puppy and check on the dogs and, and see how every, see how everything is downstairs. We'll grab some drinks and some food, and then we'll get some sleep. Went downstairs. Anyway, Carlo, who is our golden retriever puppy, she's six months old, is doing pretty well with house training to be honest with you we go days and days without any accidents and then every now and then she'll do like a wee on the kitchen tiles or something like that anyway we've just been do- dealing with that jamie was still recovering from a swollen finger <laughs> we'd gone downstairs and carlo had weed directly on her favorite rabbit <laughs> on, a, on a stuffed rabbit <laughs> and we went in the kitchen and we were like oh for god's sake and i'm not talking a bit of we i'm talking a fluffy gray cuddly rabbit was dark yellow it was disgusting (laughs) and it was on the kitchen floor and i was like oh this is rank so it was like i was on the floor like trying to clean it up started to clean it all up and she was like banning around and (laughs) thought it was brilliant and i was like no because obviously she's running near it and i was trying to sort it out (laughs) and um anyway just finished clearing up the floor and the little shit she picked the soaking wet wee <laughs> rabbit up and shook it at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then the more you protested against it, the more excited she got. And she'd got this rabbit still in her mouth and she was oh, just shaking it near you. And it soaked you and I was pissing myself laughing. Yeah, Jamie running and... away from you because I didn't want you to follow me because she was following you with pissy rabbit. <laughs> And she kept on shaking the pissy rabbit at you. <laughs> <laughs> and you ended up with wee all over you. I was screaming at me. Like... I was laughing my head off. Yeah, Jamie I was, was down the other end of the kitchen, doubled over, like crying with laughter. I was shrieking <laughs> at Carlo, telling her to stop it. She thought that was a game, so she did it even more. I was drenched. I just finished trying the wedding dress on. You'd not got it on at that point. No, though, yeah, and I'd taken it off, Thank and it had a shower, in her, and obviously it had a shower and everything. And then she, I oh, was fucking soaked in dog piss. Oh my god, it was rank. Oh, so bad, little shit. I swear to God, we, I, we do nothing but talk about dog poo and incidents with dogs on this podcast. Oh, oh talking of that, I got dog poo on my wedding dress on our wedding day. Yeah, it wasn't noticeable at all. It was. I didn't Also, it. when I took it off and hung it up after the wedding, not only did I have dog poo in the bottom of it, from, we, which we thought we'd cleared up, and it was like everywhere was clean. I, don't, I still don't know where it's from. Also, when we'd got in from the wedding, Carlo bounded up to me and jumped up me and gave me like a fuss, and I've got massive paw prints on the front of it. Oh, yeah, but she's cute. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> no, no, she, she is. is. <laughs> she is. She so, is. yeah, we had... um, And we had, oh, my God, the weather as well. We we just... Oh, it rained and rained and rained for, like, three or four weeks before we got married. Every day, day in, day out. Yeah. And the new house, like, uh, that we bought at Christmas, we've got um, on the extension part of it, which is where our bedroom is, we've got skylights above our bed above the end of our bed and in our bathroom mm. and it hailed and and we had lightning and thunder and honestly it was so loud you remember that it was like waking us up at all hours of the yeah, night i remember it sounded like we were being like pelted with rocks for hours yeah it did oh it was so loud in our bedroom so like we'd not slept properly and we kept thinking oh the weather's gonna be fucking shocking when we get married um 
and you know because we were we had a marquee built in the back garden um and you know thinking about oh, I'll get like our guests and about getting in and out of the venue and all sorts of things that we were worried about and oh the as the day got closer the weather just got worse and worse and it was just torrential rain for hours at a time mm. it was so bad and then we were just on the morning when we were getting ready it was raining and raining and raining and we just pretty much accepted that it was going to fucking nail it down and it was going to be horrible and then it stopped raining literally 10 minutes before we got in the rolls royce yeah it did and then it did not rain then at all and it kept the the sun yeah and the sun came out it was gorgeous it was a lovely day all of our photos are sunny and beautiful yeah they are i don't know what the fuck happened (laughs) But we drove all the way um, to where we got married and it was sunny and lovely. And we got married, came back out and it was sunny and warm and lovely. And then we drove all the way back, uh, which was a trek. And um, and then we had our party at the evening and it was clear, starry yeah, night it was, all it night. Was and starry. everyone, like some people didn't leave till gone fucking off two, three o'clock. Yeah. And it was still dry and warm and nobody could believe it. And then we do you remember when we woke up the next day and it was fucking nailing it down? Yeah. We couldn't believe it. We I couldn't just couldn't get over that. It was great though. I had great fun. It was amazing, wasn't it? It was mm. it was so much fun. And you know, it almost because we got married literally just after the restrictions had been lifted, which wasn't deliberate, that was um that was that just coincidence. Yeah, it was pure it? coincidence. We were able to have thirty guests. And um, what that meant is it coincided for most people with the first thing that they had done post yeah. lockdown. Yeah. Like most people had not been out, done anything, gone anywhere, or seen any people in over a year. Mm. And then they'd come to our wedding. Yeah. And it was so nice to see people, wasn't it? Yeah, it was oh. really lovely. Just like people, just like people in a in a place talking to each other and drinking. Yeah, and like. Just, it was just lovely, wasn't it? We ordered possibly the biggest Domino's ever Oh my God, yes, we history. ordered a massive Domino's for everybody. Because, like, with Domino's, they do a lot of vegan stuff as well. And they do, like, decent vegan pizza. And we have a lot of vegan friends and you often eat vegan. Mm. Um, and it was just great. It was really lovely. It was. And the dogs were, like, well, especially Carla, was dead happy to have, like, a... Load of attention. And... Just like, yeah, loads of people. Oh my god! I will tell you another. See, I've got loads of dog, disgusting dog related stories. So, I was in my wedding dress, and I was I was um, with my dad, and um, I was like in the kitchen, um, and the dogs. Sometimes they do this thing, like Castro and Carlo, where. Uh, because they're almost like in competition with each other at the moment because they're still figuring out the hierarchy, if you put water down for them, they both drink it as fast as possible so the other one doesn't nick the other one's water. They do also have their own water bowls. No, that they did. I, we put them in... They weren't sharing bowls. When that incident happened, oh, that they had a bowl each. separate bowls. Yeah, and they were like both drinking it as if it was some sort of fucking race who could drink the water faster. <laughs> The thing is, Carlo can do that, but Castro's tiny. So Castro threw all hers up. <laughs> so she drank it all and then just stood there and vomited it all oh over the my kitchen. Baby. And I was just stood there in a full wedding dress. I just looked at my dad and my dad was like, okay. So like, obviously he had to then like clean up all this dog sick in the kitchen. And um, <laughs> I was like watching him sort of like sort it out and I was like trying to get him the things that he needed and whilst he turned his back to maybe get some disinfectant or some wipes or something like that Carlo ran in and started eating it off the floor and my dad was like no and I was just I was like huh, huh, like this and then dad started gagging and then dad's partner started gagging and then I started gagging and there's three of us in the kitchen going huh, huh. <laughs> and fucking Carlo eating dog sick on the floor. I'm in a full fucking wedding dress. 
<laughs> Everybody's gagging. Sorry it's for like, that cackle. It's like that fucking scene of Family Guy where they all just vomit on each other for like three minutes. And like, it was just, it just got worse and worse and worse. Um, and then Dad managed to get hold of Carlo and was like, right, you outside so they could like clean it up and like do everything. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, my dad like ran at the back door after Carlo and I thought, what? What's going on? <laughs> and what had happened was Carlo had run out into the garden and spotted like one of our guests and was like, yeah, and went up to give him a fuss and was licking them in the face. And my dad was like, no! And was, like ran outside to try and like rescue them from it. And then he like didn't have the heart to actually tell them what had happened. So he, he was trying to stop her from licking her face but wouldn't say why. And then he came into me and just looked at me and was like, some things are just better left unsaid. <laughs> oh, funny. God, honestly. Like, I should, them dogs. They're just... They're f- it's mad, isn't it? Like, they're, they're so opposite to each other, aren't they? Yo, oh my God, yeah. But, yeah, I don't... Yeah, nobody... That person who got licked... By Carlo doesn't need to know. No, they don't. Because lots of people got licked by Carlo that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. Um, okay, what else do we have, people? What else do we... Oh, my God, I just want to say, um, one of our, our friend who was at the wedding, who um, was your... Is it Maid of Honour? No, it's not called Maid of Honour, is it? It's called Witness. Oh, yeah, we didn't have maids of honour, bridesmaids or anything, did we? No, 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 no. not for the little one. No. Um, I had, we had witnesses, so your mum was a witness. Yeah. Um, Rach was a witness. Rach said... <gasps> Excuse me, that was a yawn. <laughs> I was really comfy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rach said that um, we made one of the... What are they called? Like, the people at the... Like, the people the registrars. Work. Yeah, it, she said that we made one of them cry with our vows. Oh, yeah, so we did vows to each other, and we had not shown them to each other before the wedding day, had we? No. Well, before that ceremony. Mm. So, like, we'd written them to each other, um, you know, but they were private, and they were, you know, they were like a surprise to each other, weren't they? (laughs) They was... What are you laughing? (laughs) Sorry, I was laughing at that face that I pulled. But it was... It was really nice, and I'm really glad that we didn't show them to it. That was the only thing that we didn't show each other. Yeah, and I remember, like, when we were writing the vows over the week or so that we were writing them, or maybe two weeks that we were writing them, there was loads of periods of time where we were actually physically writing them together, mm. but not showing, like, not letting on to the other what it was about or what yeah, we were saying. Yeah, absolutely. I was so nervous about mine because Jamie's one of these really, like, talented metaphorical oh I can't really explain it like the way I would explain the way I would describe Jamie's writing is like oh, and th- there's no other way of putting this is flowery oh I would have gone poetic that's what I mean though by flowery it's like really um embellished and considered and artistic and you know I and I, I'm not that type of communicator at all. I'm really straightforward. It doesn't mean that I can't write something beautiful, but it, but it won't have any flowery language in it. So like, one of the things I was worried about was that I knew full well that whatever Jamie was writing that I couldn't see was going to be like really beautiful. And then I kept thinking, God, imagine if Jamie comes out with something like fucking Shakespeare. And then I, and I come out with like, I promise to be good. <laughs> that's what I was worried about <laughs> oh my god I was so nervous do you remember how like so there was this bit when when we went in to like get married oh my god I was so so utterly horribly nervous that I my my knees were shaking oh and like I thought I was gonna throw up I thought I was gonna fall over I thought I was gonna faint I was so I struggled so much because I was just so nervous and um I wasn't nervous no you weren't were you no. I was absolutely shitting myself that's so cute because usually you're not nervous and I am nervous yeah and I said this to somebody at the wedding that 
people assume that because of the job I do and because I publicly speak all the time and I'm on the telly or whatever, that I must be really confident all the time and, and nothing gives me nerves. And that, so going and doing our vows wouldn't make me nervous. But the be- the only way I can explain it really is that if it's something personally very important to me, then I I will be a nervous wreck. But if it's work stuff, I don't get any nerves around that mm. because I know what, like there's just something about doing those vows and getting married, and like oh my god, the whole thing it was just so nerve wracking. Yeah. Oh my god, I. There was parts of my vows that I actually stuttered. Like, I was like, I, I was like thinking to myself, come on, you can do this. You know how to read something publicly. Yeah. Like it was so nerve wracking. I just wanted it to be right. And I wanted it. It was just so important to get it right. <laughs> I was so nervous. Oh, <laughs> Jamie did amazing. You did your vows first, didn't you? I did. I did. I wanted to go first. And you made me cry. Yeah, well, I, you made me cry, so I wanted to go first so that I didn't have to do mine after I'd been crying. <laughs> and it worked out very well for me. Yeah. <laughs> but We've some lovely photographs of us both reading our vows to each other, haven't we? Yeah. From the photographer. Yeah. So we're just waiting for those to be, like, edited and stuff and yeah. finished. And we'll share some. Yeah. Yeah. It was... I really enjoyed it, actually, as a day. It was... It was really nice to have, like, a small, intimate wedding. Yeah, it was. I loved it. I thought it was perfect like that. Yeah. I really really liked it. It it was just everything that we wanted. And it was important to us because at the end of the day, like, us choosing to get married is about our relationship and our love and, Mm. you know, us more than anything. Yeah. It's not about fucking... 180 people getting a fucking roast dinner. Yeah, and also, even at our big, like, um, when we do our vows, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're having an, our original, like, our big wedding. Uh, we're still gonna have it, but it's gonna be a humanist celebrant, and it's gonna be sort of, like, renewing our vows, but, you know. Yeah, it's like, uh, I think they're called humanist blessings, I think that's what yeah, we're having. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're still having that, but I'm not having a big roast dinner. Like, it's literally... The worst thing I can think of is doing something that makes us like really nervous on a hot summer's day because everyone gets married when it's when it's summer in a white fucking dress. In a white dress, <gasps> you do not want a roast dinner at one o'clock. So we're gonna have some of our favorite foods instead, aren't we? Yeah, we found this vegan caterer that just does the most amazing vegan food. So, like, all being well, they're catering the humanist blessing and the big the big celebration next summer. Um, I fucking... Honestly, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Um, just an excuse for me to eat all their fucking food. <laughs> and, well, I was just going to say, I worked up until the day before our wedding on Feminist Stationery Company stuff. Yeah, you did, didn't and you? And I'm still not, like, up to date with orders. And but, then, obviously, well, then, we, like, jetted off to Portugal. Yeah, yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, I had to close down from a stationery company. It just... It was becoming quite difficult to run um, if I was... Unless I was going to significantly increase prices. Brexit um, impacted you yeah, massively, didn't it? because of Brexit. I literally set up this company during... Like, well, a month before lockdown. And I didn't see any really very minimal issues or impacts from lockdown and COVID. Um, Only things like shipping times. Yeah. That's the only thing, really. But Brexit has just devastated us, really. Our suppliers all were already sort of operating in an in a EU capacity. A lot of them have closed down. The ones who haven't closed down are based in other EU countries and it's really expensive for me to get stuff over to, like, make it. Um, And then same with other suppliers who get their supplies from EU countries. I've had... Well, they've had to put their prices up and it's just been really difficult, really. So I've I've had to close down and maybe, you know, there's a gap in the market for UK suppliers now 
I'm sure someone will pick it up and I've been hoping that would happen since January and it just hasn't um so I did a big closing down sale and I am getting around to fulfilling all of those orders still now and maybe one day I'll be able to reset up again um hopefully but it's it's been I would love to see you do that because you're so talented in your designs and the (laughs) things that you wanted to do and the things you've created it's I don't think people like obviously don't particularly want to go into the old Brexit debate but but like pe- I don't think people have fully um what's the word I'm looking for appreciated quite how much uh of everything has ties to the EU yeah. like like so you said even some of your suppliers that are technically in the UK they themselves are using materials or machinery or whatever yeah. that's from the EU or in the EU. Yeah. So so even when they go, oh, we're a UK supplier. What they're not telling you though is that they're getting they're buying their raw materials or their um, supplies from EU countries, yeah. which means it's not so like you. Yes, you're for example, I don't know, say you were buying paper stock or something like that from from somewhere that says they're a UK supplier, but they're getting it from fucking Germany. Yeah. So so their prices have gone up exponentially and now they're passing it on to you. Yeah, so, which is fair you know, enough, but it's fair. I don't like, want to keep on passing it on to customers. The customer, exactly. So eventually it just means ex- very, very expensive products yeah. for everybody. Yeah. It's, it, it, the impact has been absolutely massive. Yeah, it's been really, really difficult. Um, but also, just quickly... It's not even just EU supplies either. I think I think it's and don't quote me on this. I'm not completely up to date. Um, but even if your suppliers aren't are, are international, but not EU, um, because of issues with trade deals being set, that's still ridiculously high prices. Yeah, like Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, yeah it's impacted them hugely. Yeah, so. Yeah. So then we, so like then we um, jetted off to Portugal, didn't we? Like yeah, a the day, next day after, after our wedding, our wedding, and uh, we, and then we've been here ever since because we were here for a week, and then we decided to extend it for another week. Yeah. Um, and we should be coming back next week, um, and it has just been amazing. Like we have had s- just such a lovely time. Yeah. Um. It, and it's, it's just nice to have oh, a rest. I don't I feel like we've had a rest in, like, a long time. Yeah, and we had a proper, proper rest last week, didn't we? Yeah. This week we're doing bits and bobs for work and stuff, but that's because we've chosen to extend it and stay here and, you know, still have a rest, you know, and everything, but, like, we're still doing bits and bobs that we need to do from um, here. But, like, last week, oh, my God, we were just in the sun, on the beach, drinking, reading, reading chilling out. Yeah. It was it was just gorgeous, wasn't it? Yeah. We have swam in the sea so much. Oh my god, we've we've had so much fun like playing with um our our noodles. Our pool, pool, pool noodles. noodles. <laughs> and we've been taking them in, the, in sea, the sea and then like floating on the waves and just like lying there and get, and like deliberately sort of just getting like taken away by waves. It's been yeah. so much fun. It's so fun. I love it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been great. Um and the oh, it's just been so hot, and we've both got such amazing tans. And we've been very careful though. We've been putting like fa- factor fifty on, and and always topping up our lower factors. We've done excellent. We've rinsed through three bottles of sun cream already. Actually, we had to go to the super the Intermarche and get some more. Yeah, so we have been very careful. Yeah, we have, but it's been amazing. Just been like eating gorgeous food and like drinking and chilling out and reading it's, it's been so it's been, nice it's been so nice for me to read for fun yeah and i've yeah. not done that in so long you actually cuddled up to me today and you were like re- you read for a bit and yeah. like you were like so relaxed like you were so fucking relaxed and you were just you were like looking out over the pool and the palm trees and stuff yeah you were, like, reading your book and then you were like Okay, time for a nap. And then you like, <laughs> finished reading with the chapter of your book, and then you like cuddled up and just fell asleep next to me. Yeah, I did. It was great. <laughs> it was so nice. Right, we are about out of time, so let's do our ending clink. And thank you so much to the thirty three thousand of you who have downloaded. Right. And we'll talk to you soon. We've got so much to talk to you. Yeah, about. we've got loads of episodes coming up. Right, look after yourselves.